I'm excited to serve as your host and moderator. It's a panel about liquidity and AMMs on Stellar. Um, if you'd like to submit a question for us during this session, you can do that using the QA tab on the right hand side of your screen. So just a reminder, I am Justin Rice, VP of Ecosystem at the Stellar Development Foundation. Today, I'm joined by two panelists, Philip Meng, Head of Liquidity and Markets at the Stellar Development Foundation, and Dima Gamiza, co-founder of UltraStellar. Um, I'd love it if each of you could briefly introduce yourselves to the audience. For anyone who's not already familiar, tell us a little bit more about you, starting with Phil. Thanks, Justin. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, my name is Phil Meng. I head up uh, liquidity and markets at Stellar. Uh, previous to Stellar, I spent about 15 years in traditional finance, trading equity derivatives. Uh, since I've been at Stellar, I've been uh, working on improving liquidity for Stellar assets um, across the ecosystem for our payments use case. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Dima. Hi everyone, my name is Dima. I'm UltraStellar co-founder. UltraStellar is a company behind such projects as uh, Lobster, Stellar Term, Stellar X. We develop on Stellar since 2014 and I'm very excited about Meridian and happy to be here. Awesome. So we're gonna talk about AMMs on Stellar and I just wanna give a quick overview. It has been, it's been a big start to November for the Stellar network. So as many of you may know on November 3rd, um, validators voted to accept the protocol 18 upgrade, which is the most significant upgrade since Stellar's inception because it introduces a powerful new feature to the network, which is the ability to create automated market makers or AMMs as we'll probably call them from now on. AMM functionality, it allows developers to empower users to create and deposit into liquidity pools, and it extends path payments to execute trades against those pools when they offer a better rate of exchange than the order books. So AMMs, they're simple by design, and they have the potential to democratize market making and liquidity provision, thereby enabling cheaper, faster, and more usable cross-border payments. This is an exciting development, not only because Stellar is one of the earliest layer one blockchains to incorporate AMM functionality at the protocol level, but also because SDF and the greater Stellar ecosystem collaborated to accelerate development so that AMM functionality was immediately available to end users at launch. So I just wanna note that companies like UltraStellar and Stellarport who have built these AMM interfaces, these are independent, they're not affiliated with the SDF. And honestly, that's part of what's cool, right? The ecosystem is driving innovation to take advantage of the new feature. So as a result, two weeks after launch, there are over 1500 liquidity pools and over 6,000 liquidity providers on the network. Many existing asset pairs have lower spreads than ever before. And increasingly, new assets are able to bootstrap liquidity. In fact, according to the Stellar X dashboard, which we'll hear about later, um, there have been over $13 million worth of deposits into liquidity pools and 24 hour trade volume exceeded the million dollar mark yesterday. So today we're gonna get into it. Why are AMMs important? What do they look like on Stellar? What impact are they having? What is the future hold? And so Phil, I'm gonna start out with a question for you. Um, what are some of the challenges inherent to liquidity provision and how do AMMs address them? Sure, so before AMMs, um, we have uh, ha had a order book uh, decentralized exchange and providing liquidity and making markets on these decentralized exchanges or even a centralized exchange is pretty non-trivial. Uh, you have to understand the tech, uh, understand risk management, um, know how to adjust bid and offers. Um, and it was, it was a challenge. Uh, we worked with a few partners and uh, had some initial liquidity, but there had to be a long-term plan to grow liquidity if we're gonna really uh, achieve our payments use case. So, one of the things that we saw with AMMs in other ecosystems last summer was the ability to draw in this liquidity. And I think one of the biggest things is the simplicity and the UI that it provides. An individual can deposit funds into a pool and that those funds essentially make a market for liquidity. So if I, I deposit asset A and asset B into a pool. That's all that's needed. I don't need to risk manage. I don't need to understand the technology or like, you know, uh, just bids and offers. It does it. Uh, there's, there's some pros and cons with that, but like just that simple UI makes this uh, liquidity provision much more scalable uh, for future use. 
Great. And so we're going to hear more about ecosystem involvement, but for now, can you just tell me a bit about SDF's role in bringing AMENS to Stellar? Yeah, this was one of the really cool things that I saw, right? Like it wasn't like, hey, we are going to build this. We put our heads down, we build it and release it. It was something that we discussed with the community. We recognized this need for scalable liquidity. Uh, there was discussions to build it into the protocol. And then we engaged the community to iterate on what was the best V1 for this. So it, it, it was a very, like, this was one of the things that I, I think, you know, the decentralization and kind of the community aspect of being at Stellar was really exciting where, you know, a lot of people, including Dima and other community members had real input into what was being built and then being able to, for, for them to build on top of it and have something uh, ready to go for day one. And so they're building on top of something that we implemented at the protocol level. Um, I, I guess, can you tell me a little bit more about what makes AMMs on Stellar unique? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, as you know, uh, we do ha still have the DEX and we have the AMM. So like, like, as you mentioned, Justin, it's built at the protocol level. Like when you look at other uh, um, chains, it's it's a level above the protocol. So that in and of itself is a unique feature of uh, Stellar AMMs. But another feature that I think is pretty interesting is that because there are two separate sources of liquidity, one being the AMM and one being the DEX, there's a, essentially a smart routing function that happens through Stellar Path Payments. So if I send an order that I want to convert dollars to euro, the technology checks the best price on the DEX and also the AMM and will fill uh, the conversion at wherever the best price is. So I think that's kind of a unique function. We see that in, you know being built in uh, uh, across DeFi, but we also see that, that that's a natural function when you talk about equities uh, where there's a natural uh, best bid and best offer that has to go through a smart router so that you are guaranteed a best price. Yeah, and so that's interesting. I mean, the way that AMMs work to trade against an AMM, you essentially use an existing operation, the path payment operation, which you alluded to. So anyone who's building an interface that just already uses path payments gets the liquidity benefits that AMMs might bring. But there's the other side to that too, like for the AMM to exist, there has to be a way for users to deposit into liquidity pools. And you know what was interesting to me was how quickly those interfaces were built. Um, as, as we've said already, there's, they were actually, there were several that were available basically on the day the protocol upgraded, which is pretty cool. Um, and I guess I'll turn to you, Dima, because I think it's remarkable what, what Ultrastellar built into Stellar X. And I'd love for you to just sort of tell us more about what you built. And if you can, maybe even show us. Yes, sure. Um, so as soon as we realized that uh, AMMs will be built into Stellar network, we started working on interface to give access to our users uh, to AMMs. Uh, and we decided to build it into Stellar X product. And sure, I can show you some slides to have some understanding of what we have built. Let me know if you can see my screen. I sure can. Cool. So uh, we have analytics section uh, session. Uh, it's um, where you can see liquidity of MM pools. It's like overview page. You can check daily volume. You can uh, check top uh, AMM pools. You can see details of uh, every pool. For example, uh, XLM USDC pool. You can check its liquidity, its daily volume, uh, latest transactions, and other stats. For sure, you can um, add liquidity or remove, or you even cr can create uh, new liquidity pools if they were not created before. Uh, and you can manage your, let's say, AMM portfolio. You can check some stats, you can control uh, everything from here. So in a few words, um, we built a tool that can, uh, that provides option to our users to interact with AMMs, to uh, provide liquidity. And at the same time, it's 
quite convenient to check some stats and metrics on uh, uh, analytics pages. Have you gotten much feedback from users so far? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite uh, impressive how how it started. It, it's only uh, two weeks when uh, since AMMs went live, and uh, it's impressive because we uh, received like more than five thousand of uh, requests from people to try uh, AMMs and Stellarix uh, Stellarix from day one uh, because we started as beta testing, but now it's open for everyone and yeah a lot of people using AMMs so we have a lot of positive feedback uh yeah our users seems happy that's great yeah it's 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 a nice intuitive user interface right like it just uh, you know we sort of talked about the Phil mentioned the UI and it, the idea right is that an interface should make it easy for a user to deposit liquidity and to understand what they're doing when they do it and then to withdraw liquidity when they want and it like it's, it's cool that it could just sort of slot into your existing product, right? That you could add functionality to Stellar X that already existed, that just like was kind of like a new feature for users. And it seems like people get it, right? It's, it is very intuitive, which is awesome. I, I guess my, my next question for you, Dima, is like, as, as a builder on Stellar, um, have you seen benefits from having AMMs built in at the protocol level? Yeah, sure. I I believe I, I think it's, uh, that yeah, AMMs never were built into any st any uh, network port of protocol before. Uh, this is the first time probably, and we definitely have some benefits. For example, uh, we can start with network benefits like uh, fast transactions and uh, almost zero fees for any AMM uh, transactions. Mm, what else we I think this is great that we have like common core, let's say, uh, of this uh, AMM system uh, and all stellar, uh, stellar ecosystem projects, they interact with the same thing uh, comparing to other network, like Phil mentioned. Um, it's uh, so every project works on the same idea, let's say, they have uh, the same goal, like Stellar X, Stellar Port and other products. Uh, they uh, participate in, in, in some common thing, uh, adding liquidity to the same pools, um, bringing more liquidity, um, adding some volume to, to daily volume of all these MM pools. And as a result, we have uh, better uh, exchange rates for uh, multiple pairs, assets, pools. Um, what else uh, can I say? Oh, I, I, I also think that a uh, big advantage of uh, having AMMs on protocol level is that it was distributed really easy. As again, as Phil mentioned, we uh, every project that had uh, past payments implemented, for example, as a part of swap functionality, uh, get their access to AMMs easily at day one on November 3rd when protocol 18 went live, which is great. It was the easiest upgrade for, for projects, I, I would say. So yeah, quite a lot of benefits. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, again, it was amazing to see Ultracellar and others building these uh, interfaces that allowed people to deposit liquidity on Stellar. And it's amazing to see existing Stellar wallets be able to benefit from that liquidity. Um, Phil, I guess there, were, there was something different about the way that SDF and the ecosystem as a whole sort of collaborated on this protocol rollout to introduce this new feature. Um, can you talk a bit about like sort of how we made the launch happen quicker than previous launches? Yeah, so in the past, uh, when protocols launched, there was a delay between when users can actually access it. For this one, it was, uh, the effort was made where on day one, uh, users had access to the product. They can touch it, they can feel it, they can interact with it. Um, and that was because of the, uh, what I uh, previously mentioned where that collaboration of leading up to that protocol release, the, the uh, content communication with the, uh, the community and, and Dima and his team and, and others in the community to, to build these front ends, right? To make sure things were ready for launch. So I think this was kind of unique because that feedback loop was an ongoing loop and it wasn't like, we're gonna build something and then release something 
and then others can build on top of it. There was, you know, the starting line was 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 coordinated, and you know, uh, the fact that it went smoothly was a, a big achievement. Cool. Yeah. I mean, when in order to roll it out, it was interesting because I know that we we sort of we had SDF talk to the ecosystem and asked about, hey, what resources would be helpful, you know? And I know that that uh, unlike other protocol rollouts where basically um, developers got access to the API, because most developers, they don't interact with Stellar core, like the Stellar protocol code in the raw, right? They actually interact via API. And so like a lot of the feedback that we got was, hey, can you just like share the API spec, the API contract earlier or create a mock API environment? Um, and we did both those things. And we also set up like a, a future net, which was basically, you know, the test net is a stable version of, of the protocol release, but we just set up one that was like bleeding edge and said, hey, people, you can start experimenting on this. There might be some changes, but you can at least start to tease out and build against something. And I think like the rollout of those resources early was super instructive for us because at SDF, because it allowed us to get better feedback from the people who were actually gonna build on the feature. And I think it was helpful for the ecosystem because they could take those resources and get a head start. Um, anyway. Uh, and I, I mean, so it's been only two weeks, um, which isn't a ton of time, but I, I think that we already have started to see some impact. And so Phil, I, I guess I wanna start with you and talk about the sort of early results of AMMs. Um, how have you seen AMMs impact liquidity on the network overall? So the, the initial numbers are pretty promising. Um, we've seen, uh, let me pull up some stats, uh, 1,700, New unique uh, unique pool providers. There's sixteen over sixteen hundred uh, liquidity pools, and I mean those two stats just signify people are are using these. There's there's new assets. There's new pools that that neither previously existed. So, given the, uh, uh, this initial uptake, we're, we're we're seeing people building new things that previously couldn't because there might not be liquidity, right? So now with new assets, new pools, some other way to exchange value that is very simple and easy, we, 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 we have this new innovation. And some of the other sets that I think are pretty uh, interesting is that out of the 1,200 uh, unique uh, uh, providers, about 10% of them are providing liquidity in five plus pools. So this signifies to me that, you know, it's not just individuals. There are people that are actually seeing liquidity provision as, uh, uh, as a benefit, right, uh, to themselves. Um, so I think these are kind of promising numbers. Uh, numbers are all up and to the right. Um, so like, that's, the, that's exciting to see. Are there any spreads that we've seen decrease? Any like notable decreases in spreads? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So one, uh, one of the things that we've seen uh, specifically in Argentina. So for those of you that know uh, or don't know, uh, Argentina dollar rates, uh, there are numerous. There's at least four or five that I know of and the spreads are large. So the, the cost of exchanging between uh, the Argentinian peso and the US dollar is expensive. So on, uh, uh, when the AMMs were released, um, the spreads narrowed to 1%, which is, I think, the best, uh, uh, tightest spread that I've seen in Argentina on the blue dollar rate has been around one and a half. I think that that in and of itself is, is, is really exciting to see. So like, what does that mean? What does that mean for an end user uh to have a, a spread that's lower than the blue dollar rate? So if we're looking at a one and a half percent spread, it's ba it basically is the cost of uh, the exchange from one asset to another. So uh, it's actually half the cost because you're only paying one side. But if I wanted to exchange $1 for a peso or vice versa, I'm basically paying at least 75 basis points. Uh, but with the uh, with the with AMMs, that's uh, uh, with a one percent spread, you're only paying fifty basis points. So that is a thirty three 
25% improvement on your costs. So it's cheaper for people who are converting currencies. They, 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 the cost is lower for them. It's, it's better. The cost is lower. Yeah. And, you know, when we're thinking about cross-border payments, I, 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 I think we can envision some future state where this is not just USD, uh, uh, USDC uh, peso, right? We, we could think about all different fiat assets that are tokenized into stable coins. And these AMM pools are enabling cheaper and more efficient uh, FX transactions. Cool. I, and Dima, you, you sort of shared a, in one of your slides the, the cool dashboard that StellarX has, has up. Um, are there any stats that you've noticed on there that about that sort of speak to how the last two weeks are, have gone? Yeah, as as I mentioned, we uh, we went completely. I mean, to full live program now, uh, start, starting with uh, beta testing, and AMMs on Stellarx are available for everyone today. So uh, thousands of people already using um, AMMs, interacting with pools, etc. And uh, we have some noticeable metrics already, um, like uh, TVL parameter, uh, total uh, value locked, uh, is, which is more than $13 million uh, today um, in different uh, stellar assets, um, for sure. Um, also, daily volume is more than $1 million uh, per day, which is also great. and. Uh, yeah, we uh, Stellar and Stellar X users created uh, more than 1500 of different pools and more and more happens every day. So I would say, you know, during these two weeks, a lot of things happened, but it, it's definitely something noticeable and people like it. So we'll have really nice and cool metrics really soon, even, even bigger numbers. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, I guess we're already sort of starting to trend this way, but let's talk about what's next for AMMs. And we actually have some, a lot of audience questions coming in about this, but which I'll ask. But first, I, I just kind of want to know from your point of view, Dima, with, with all these customers participating in liquidity pools, what impact do you see AMMs having on your business going forward? Okay, yeah, uh, this is a good question. Thank you. I think we, we can expect uh, user base growth uh, as a main parameter. Uh, I think uh, we'll have a lot of people uh, from other networks who will who would like to try MMs on Stellar because uh, of its uh, fast and cheap transactions. Um, I think we need uh, we can expect a lot of new uh, Stellar assets uh, created um, because because today it's quite easy uh, to you know to implement market making for your assets so issues uh, became more free uh, in this sense they don't need to create some difficult things on order books um, uh, but it's still the option um, um, i see swap functionality will be uh, prioritized in our products because it's easy to use and simple uh, and provides users with better exchange rates um, because of these um, things that uh, Phil was talking about, uh, the past payments became much smarter and they can go through SDX or through AMM and uh, give better rates. Um, and overall, I mean, after, uh, since we will have AMMs, we will have better uh, liquidity. And with good liquidity, uh, we have more options and opportunities as developers to build something new. I see big opportunities for cross-border payments, for example, and many other things that yeah can be done with, with good liquidity on network. Cool. There, there are a couple of questions about plans for the StellarX interface. Um, I guess the first one is, um, will you implement a way to view the fees gained when you add liquidity to a pool? Um, yeah, I think we, uh, we already have some information about, uh, about fees. Uh, but we are planning to expand this this se uh, section in in our interface definitely. Yeah, I got to say, I mean, given how new AMMs are, right? Like the protocol upgraded two weeks ago. Normally, after in past protocol upgrades, we wouldn't even see a, a product that took advantage of the new feature for months yet. 
And so like, it's pretty cool that there's all this data already. And it seems like continuing to think about interesting data to provide users. I, I imagine that's something we at SDF will continue to do, right? We'll think, okay, what, what are, what are the interesting numbers that we can gather from the network? But I imagine at StellarX, you'll also continue to iterate on your dashboard, provide more information, improve the user experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We, we have a lot of plans connected to uh, AMM functionality in, our, um, in, in StellarX. Um, we, I'm sure we'll have a lot of uh, different announcements soon. I'm not sure that I can share everything now, but um, yeah, uh, we mostly focused on AMMs now, uh, improving swap functionality, make everything uh, super clear for our users. And, um, and, yeah. and when you say that, because there's another question here that says, since StellarX has both a DEX and LPs, is there a clear solution between the two? Is there, are you sort of going to help users decide? I, I don't know. Is it... It sounds like you're, you're one thing that you're thinking about is tending to favor swap functionality because you think it provides a better user experience. Is that accurate? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends. Swap functionality uh, can be useful for those who want to uh, exchange something fast in and with better rate. And uh, SDX still has um, its own like um, benefits. You can create uh, orders as you wish. You can create limit orders and uh, control your uh, trades more um, detailed, let's say. Uh, so we are planning to keep both uh, SDX and uh, AMM um, uh, functionalities like uh, separate and we plan to develop them. Uh, but at the same time, we have swap functionality, which works with both options, which is great. Cool. Uh, and I guess the, the other question, or the, the other question about the future of AMMs, right? So protocol 18 launched basically a, a fairly opinionated MVP version of AMMs on Stellar. Part of the reason that I think we did that, and you can read about this in a blog post that the SDF published, but like after a bunch of community and, and ecosystem interaction, the idea was let's start with the simple design, let's see how people use it. But I guess there are a couple of questions here, and maybe these are maybe I'll point these to Phil um, about what's the future of AMMs. And I'm going to read you one specific one, but then you can sort of take it from there, right? So uh, for AMMs, what are the plans for different curves and different fees? Is the first one, and the second is more general. We've seen AMMs like Uniswap continue to iterate from V1 now to V3. Um, since AMMs on Stellar at the protocol level, how challenging will it be to iterate new versions in the future? So I guess it's a two-part question for the last three minutes. What are the plans? What are the challenges? Phil? Sure, so uh, I'll start with the first one. I, I think the future, look, we, we th th this just got released and the way that we view it is this is the beginning. I think AMMs getting released was, was step one. This was a very MVP. There's already discussions internally on, you know, things that we're going to do to improve uh, on the V1. So some of the discussions have been on optimizing bonding curves, right? This, without getting too technical, what that means is that spread that we're talking about, the cost of conversion, we're we're uh, working on uh, the math that makes that cost lower. Um, another one is single-sided liquidity provision. Right now, uh, if you want to deposit into liquidity pools, it has to be two tokens, right? Like, you know, in the future uh, to improve the UI, depositing one uh, token by itself uh, it will be even easier and uh, will should attract more liquidity. Um, other things we're thinking about is with liquidity pool uh, tokens uh, where you can tokenize your position. So if I deposit into a liquidity pool, that stake that I have in the pool, I can actually use potentially for other things like collateral or, or even trade that, 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 that token. So those are some of the things that, we, uh, that are continually uh, being discussed. So uh, keep an eye out for, for those. And, you know, as always, uh, if people have suggestions on, you know, things that they're seeing or exciting, um, things that we can improve on this uh, V1, uh, we'd love to hear it. And on the second 
So that's actually uh, with one minute relating. That, uh, that that's an interesting question. Um, so one of the positives of uh, having the protocol built in, uh, having the AMMs built at the protocol level, is that it's uh, uh, it, it's it's interoperable. Anybody building on top of it is has that functionality. But one of the 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 challenges is that it's built into the protocol. So that is something that, you know, we're actively thinking about and would love to engage the community to hear suggestions uh, if there are ways that they think that uh, there's better collaboration and, and ways we can figure out how, how others can build on top of uh, uh, that, that uh, the core protocol level. Yeah, and I want to just end by talking about the story that we sort of mentioned at the top, which was that for this rollout of this new feature, we did bring the ecosystem in and not even bring them in. We, we worked with the ecosystem from the beginning, right? So that there was a sort of SDF broader ecosystem collaboration. And I think that we learned a lot doing that. And part of the lesson is do that again, do that more. And so even we will continue to iterate on AMMs, right? So that they continue to improve at the protocol level. And we'll do that by continuing to like reach out to the ecosystem and find ways to speed the process, find ways to get them involved. And again, we would love any feedback that anyone has about better ways to do that. But we are out of time. So Phil, Dima, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And Dima, uh, StellarX looks amazing. Thanks for building that. There are all kinds of great interfaces out there that people have built to take advantage of AMMs. And we are super excited to see what happens next. Mm -hmm.